Welcome. I am the Lady Jane Grey. I am out today enjoying a rare visit to the Queen's Gardens. Much has happened in the last five months, and the peace of devoting time to my studies was much needed. In July I was Queen of England, but now I find myself imprisoned here, in the Tower of London, with doubts about the longevity of my life. Let me explain a little about how this all came to pass. I was born in the autumn of 1537, the first daughter of Henry Grey and Francis Brandon. My mother is cousin to the former King Henry the Eighth. As such, my family was always involved with the royal court. I myself spent much time at court both during and after King Henry's rule. My parents believed in strong discipline, education, and religion. These beliefs greatly shaped the woman that I am. I was educated in the same manner as King Henry's children. Due to my education, I strongly believe in the Protestant faith and feel that the Catholic way is not the true path to God. My parents had hopes that I might one day be married to King Edward. Because of these plans, I lived for several years with Catherine Parr and Thomas Seymour. When it became clear that this marriage was not to come to pass, and Seymour was convicted of treason, Seymour's guardianship was withdrawn, and I briefly returned home to live with my family. Shortly thereafter I became the ward of the Duke of Northumberland. It was through his machinations that I came to King Edward's attention as a possible successor to his throne. To ensure that power remained with the Duke's family, I was wed to his youngest son, Guilford Dudley. Guilford is here with me in the tower, but we are not being housed together, and I do not often see him. My father-in-law was successful in getting me named as successor to the throne, and on July 10, 1553, I was heralded as Queen of England. I refused to name my husband as king, preferring to rule myself instead of through others. Queen Mary and the Catholic believers that support her were able to force my removal from the throne just nine days later, on July 19th. I thought that I might return home and continue my studies, but Queen Mary has convicted me of treason and has yet to rule on my fate. I hope that the benevolent Queen will see that I am no threat to her rule, as I have no desire for the position. As I wait for a decision, I have envisioned for myself the house where I would live. I pray thee, let me show it to you. It is just down the way. I hope that you might stay and speak with me a while. Oh, hi! I'm so glad that you followed. Please, won't you come inside and have a look around? This is the home that I wish I could have and share with my husband. I wish for myself a simple life of devotion and study, but, as I have stated before, this is not the life that I am living. This is a simple two-story stone house with a wood shingle roof. We enter into the dining area, small but suitable for small gatherings. Off to the left is my beloved music room. Here I can practice my music while filling my house with joyous sound. Back out in the main room, just past the dining area, is the sitting area. This space is filled with the books that I love. It is a quiet and comfortable place to sit and enjoy one's books. This space also includes a picture that I created of the child that I might one day wish to have. The furniture is in the French style, reflecting the influence of my education. From here, we must venture upstairs to see the rest of the house. The bedroom is modest, with just a bed and table. Off the bedroom lies a dressing and bathing area. This space allowed me to move the wash basin out of the bedroom and into a space of its own. This room allows for the convenience of wash basin cleaning, while also offering the opportunity to soak in a tub when possible. This is an amenity that I experienced in Hampton Court and wished into my fantasy home. That is the extent of this modest house. Now that you have had a chance to look around, I hope you might stay and have some tea. I would love to tell you more about the times in which I live. Throughout my short life, I have lived under the rule of three monarchs, Henry VIII, Edward VI, 
and Mary I, and was ruler myself for nine days between King Edward and Queen Mary. Each of these monarchs has brought religious change to our country, and many have suffered due to these changing views. When King Henry took the throne, our country was thoroughly Catholic and had been for centuries. The king's great matter brought with it a break from the Church of Rome and a move towards the Protestant faith. Under this new faith, the king was head of both church and state. Outward signs of the old religion went away. Destruction of the convents and monasteries, removal of religious iconology, and the mass are but a few of these changes. By the time of King Henry's death, the majority of the country was Protestant, but there were still some sectors holding tight to the Catholic ways. King Edward was educated in the Protestant religion, and was a devout follower of Protestant beliefs. Under his reign the country became more fully entrenched in the Protestant religion. He oversaw the creation and publication of the Common Book of Prayer, which brought religious worship and devotion more strongly into the hands of the people. During this time, Catholics were persecuted. Through his advisers, Edward tried to force reform on the country. While the majority of the country remained Protestant, there were still those that were followers of the Catholic faith. Queen Mary never converted to the Protestant religion, maintaining her devout Catholic beliefs throughout her life. This devotion to her religion brought a great shift in religious doctrine during her reign. Queen Mary's devotion led to severe persecution on those believed to be Protestant. Many Protestants were burned at the stake in an effort to use fear to change the religious beliefs within the country. Despite Queen Mary's efforts, the Catholic faith was never restored as the sole re religion of England. Please keep watching as I have more exciting information about my time to share with you. Thank you.